Hi, my name is Andy Skinner. I'm the creator of the RAMP Trendline Scan Program that you see running in the background. This video is not about the RAMP program, it is about MACD. We will, however, use the RAMP program to find stocks on logical turning points. We'll do this when we reach a point where we want to use MACD to analyze an entry into a trade. I have browsed through the scan that was just completed and selected Blockbuster Video as a good example I can use to demonstrate some things about MACD. I have turned the background white and turned on the moving averages. You can see here there's a magenta line and a green line. These are the five bar moving average, the magenta and the green bar is a 34 bar moving average. In the center of the screen you'll see a MACD. That MACD is defined as the difference of two moving averages. In this case I have used the 5 bar and the 34 bar moving averages to generate the MACD. That makes a MACD setting you can see in the lower right hand corner of 5, 34, and 1. The 5 bar being the shorter moving average, the 34 the longer moving average, and 1 is the signal line, which I'll talk about in just a moment. The MACD, as I said, is the difference of two moving averages. Now, let's look at that graphically. I'll select a point. Let's use this point right here. That is a point on the 5 bar moving average. And if I look immediately below it, right here on the green bar, I have a point on the 34 bar moving average. The MACD is the difference between those two points, or from this point to this point, which is a positive number. If I look immediately below that, I can see that that distance is put on the MACD chart is the distance from this point to the horizontal zero line. That's all a MACD really is, is the difference between two moving averages. Sometimes I like to look at it this way. If you could take the green line, the 34 bar in this case, and grab the ends of it and pull it out just as straight as a string and call that the zero line and then plot the 5 bar over the top and keep it the same distance away that it was when it was curved, you would end up with the center chart or a MACD chart. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the MACD signal line we mentioned a few minutes ago. In the bottom right hand corner you'll see the MACD settings. We've talked about the 5 and the 34 bar moving average but we haven't addressed the third setting on MACD. This is the moving average setting for the signal line. I have it set at 1. When it's set at 1, you don't see a signal line. To explain what this means, I'm going to change the signal line setting to a larger number, say 8. I'll click 8 and hit Enter. And you'll see now there are two lines on the MACD chart. The MACD itself is, in this case, the black line, and it is not as smooth as the red line. Or the red line is the signal line. The signal line, or the red line, is defined in this particular case as the 8-bar moving average of the black MACD line. In other words, it simply adds up the MACD values on the black line for the last eight bars and divides by eight to get a value for the red bar. There are two reasons to do this. The first is to smooth the MACD line to take some of the jaggedness out of it. The second reason is by smoothing it, it can also give you a signal for when to get in or out of a trade. For example, right here, the black line has moved up through the red line. There is a crossing and in some trading systems that would be a signal to purchase the stock. You'll note there is no MACD divergence there and I think it's a very poor signal and would never use it. But it serves as an illustration 
of what the signal line is and how it's used. For the purpose of this video and the videos to follow that teach you how to trade MACD, I'm going to turn the signal line off. And I can do that by simply setting its value to 1. In the next video, I'd like to get into divergence. I actually use divergence to enter trades, but it was important that we define the MACD and have a thorough understanding of it before we move into a discussion of divergence. I hope you'll take the time to watch the next video. I think you'll find it very interesting.